Is it stupid to have a component consist of 5000 lines of code? Yes, it is. And that's not just a component, that's a whole ass application you've got there. And in this video, um, I just found it hilarious, I, I read it on Reddit. In this video, I just want to get into 10 React best practices that help you avoid such a scenario where you have to ask if 5000 lines of code inside of one component is okay. The answer is no. It, I mean, you can do whatever you want, right? I'm not your father, but 5000 lines of code is a horrible idea to put into one component. And therefore, let's go over 10 best practices that help you avoid that. First one being the single responsibility principle, or in short, SCP. I'm not sure if anyone ever calls it SCP. It just means one component should have one responsibility and that's it. What that means in practice, right, is if you have one component that handles multiple things, like fetching from multiple data sources to display multiple things, consider breaking it down into multiple components. So in the end, you have one component, like one select menu that fetches one thing and displays one thing. And ideally, that even doesn't fetch the information itself, but gets it from a parent passed into the component to make it kind of a stupid component. But that's the next tip being one component ideally should be a dump component or generally your components should be as dump as possible where you handle the fetch logic in one place probably in the parent component and then create a component that is just meant to display the data in an unopinionated way for example if you had a toast notification the toast notification shouldn't know about any data fetching logic, right? You don't want to fetch data in there. Instead, pass it the title, pass it the description from whatever data you want to display, and then the toast notification just displays whatever you pass it, being a dumb component. Okay, number three is dry, at least it's called dry, and what it means is don't repeat yourself. Now, that's an interesting point, because my philosophy personally with React is repeating yourself once is fine. Repeating yourself twice is fine. However, if you repeat yourself three times or more, then you should worry about, you know, creating reusable components or breaking your logic down into separate hooks or creating helper functions to get you the information that you need. But creating reusable components from the get-go might not be the best idea. So it is a split sword, you know, when you repeat yourself a lot of times, yes, and um, think about reusability. If you know that you're, at least for now, only gonna use a piece of code once or twice, in my opinion, in that case, it's totally fine to do copy and paste for now, because after all, it just saves you time. It's not very maintainable, but you don't need it to be maintainable if you just copy it once or twice. Now, next up is conditional rendering. And what that means is using something like ternary operators or, you know, some other logic check and if statement, it does not matter to determine the conditionally shown JSX components that you currently have. And what that can help you do is in your code base, your code in the end will look way cleaner if it's rendered conditionally instead of just displaying it all at once. Now, another great thing you can do in React is use something called higher order components. And those are components that take in other components and for example, wrap them. So a great example for a higher order component would be a layout component that you create once, you give it a padding a vertically and horizontally, and then all the other components for each section of your website, for example, are gonna be passed into that higher order component. Meaning if you ever decide to change your layout, for example, if you want the padding to be just four pixels instead of six, you only have to change it in one place instead of going through every component and redoing the whole layout thing, because then you run the big risk of not having a unified style in the end, whereas with a higher order component, you only have to change it in one place. Next up, custom hooks. Again, be careful, not everything needs to be abstracted into a custom hook. It's fine to have a use effect inside of a component, it really is. However, when you have complex, lo complex logic that you would like to use in multiple components, in that case, it can make sense to create one hook that encapsulates the whole logic aspect of what you want to do. And if you do a good job at abstracting the logic away from the component into the hook, then it will be very easy to use the same hook across multiple 
of your components wherever you need the data from the hook. Okay, third to last is code splitting. I know many people have talked about this, however, it is super useful. When you have code in your application that is not immediately shown to the user, consider lazy loading it, especially if it's a complex piece of code that could slow down the user's application. Like a search bar, for example, right? If you have a search bar at the top of the page that is not visible by default, at least the, the model that pops up when you click it, consider hiding it. And generally that goes for anything that user can click and that then shows up why would you pre-render that? Maybe the user never, never even navigates there. So instead, consider when you have a drop-down menu, the drop-down that actually pops up, that is probably animated in some way, relies on an animation library. Consider splitting that from your code so it's only rendered when the user actually needs it, instead of using that JavaScript on the page load already, because it is gonna slow down the user. Okay, second to last being know when to use use memo and use callback. They are both super useful, they have their cases, but again, take it with a grain of salt, you don't need to wrap everything in a use memo or use callback. Those are React hooks that React offers you in case you need some extra performance if you have rendering issues, but don't optimize your app prematurely, that's generally not a good idea. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about with use memo and use callback, essentially what they allow you to do is with use callback you can wrap something like a function and then react will make that function maintain its integrity because by default whenever you re-render a react component the integrity of a function changes and that can sometimes cause errors when you have that as a dependency in use effect so if you want to avoid recalculating expensive operations inside of a use callback pass it a dependency array and only if one of those values in the dependency array changes then the function will actually rerun but if it doesn't if the dependency array is staying the exact same then the function will return the same output until one of the elements change and the same goes for use memo where you can you know wrap entire components and benefit from the same logic as with the use callback. Lastly, document, document, document. If you write functions, for example, helper functions, it is a great idea to just document what these do. Now, if you write very good code, yes, they might document themselves, but it is kind of not a good idea to rely on that. Instead, just take the one minute it takes quickly summarize what the function does in a comment above the function so you in a month or two will know what the function does and also if you ever happen to invite new developers into the repository um, to work with you or to maintain the repo they will have a much easier time to understand the code trust me and those are my top 10 ways i'm not 100 percent sure they were exactly 10 but about 10 those were my top react tips to avoid writing 5,000 line components if they help you be sure to like the video, I hope you enjoyed it, and then I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.